Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We are hanging out in Hebrews chapter 13, looking at Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, just really, really enjoyed doing this summer road trip series. I know it's September and we're finally wrapping it up, but just uh, I've learned a lot through studying this and preparing. I've never taught uh, through the book of Hebrews. I've done different, you know, used a lot of scriptures, but never just went through the whole book. So it's been a learning process for me. It's helped grow my mind, uh, my eyes, my vision of what, uh, see where God spoke. And it's been awesome because it spoke to me in places that I read before that because of the season I'm in at the time, you know, I didn't really need that. But this time, because I'm in a different season of life, there's been things that really haven't just spoke to me before that have. And I'm so thankful for that. And that's why I want to encourage you to read God's Word. Uh, I'll never forget when you know, I was preparing to be pastor at Gardenside Christian Church uh, two years ago. It's hard to believe that. Two years ago in late August that I didn't know what the vision was going to be. Uh, it was part-time and because Hope is Here Ministries is uh, my baby. And yet... I just knew people would say, well, what's your vision, Greg? And one day I was having my quiet time, and one of the scripture readings after the devotional reading was 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Well, I'm like, man, I'm not even reading that, looking that up. <laughs> I know that verse by heart. I do it at weddings all the time. And, you know, just in case you don't know 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it says, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And you know, friends, uh, when I went on, looked it up, was obedient, read the passage anyway, I mean, it really, really just resonated in my spirit that God said, this is what I want you to make for the foundation of Gardenside Christian Church. And I'm so thankful for that, friends, that God did that. He knew that that was what I needed to share with his people for his bride, Gardenside. So I want to encourage you, if you don't have a regular quiet time, to make sure that you do that, reading God's Word. But secondly, if it's like me that day, you know, you're like, man, I'm not even going to read that because I know that verse by heart, to still do it because you never know what God, how God wants to speak to you in a different way. And I'm so thankful that God doesn't, doesn't always do things the way we want to do them. Aren't you thankful for that today? I am. And so, friends, I want to encourage you just to, to, to read God's Word. And just like it spoke to me today on a verse I've read numerous times, I'm just in a different place. And then God said, no, that's what I want you to use. Well, let's get back in Hebrews 13. We're going to hang out in verses 5 and 7 here for a couple minutes. It says, for God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders who first taught you the word of God and think of all the good that has come from their lives. Oh, friends, I love that. You know, that last verse there I read in verse 7, uh, you know, it talked about leaders. Remember your leaders who first taught you the word of God. And Man, I'm just so thankful for so many people that taught Sunday school class when I was a kid, vacation Bible school, people that volunteered, and leaders at the churches I've served in, both before I got in full-time ministry 22 years ago. Just that God, just all the countless men and women that were leaders. And, uh, man, we just need to remember them and thank them and just all the good that's happened in our lives. To, and I know I stand on lots of people's shoulders, and I love it when occasionally I can thank them in person if I run into them somewhere. I ran into a guy named Gordon Walls, who, man, it's had a huge impact on my life. He taught a class at Southland Christian Church, and, uh, man, I attended that as a young adult and uh, just taught me so many things. And then when I went through the flood, bankruptcy, and divorce, he was a real uh, comfort there and encourager and um, now that I've celebrated, like I said, over 20 years in ministry, I was at a luncheon the other day for Sayer Christian Village, and he was there. And, and I, I didn't see him, but he saw me. He came over, and we started talking. And 
Oh, and then eventually he got to a point after we just exchanged pleasantries. I just said, man, I just want to say thank you for the ripples you made in my life. Uh, you laid the foundation for uh, modeling how I want to do ministry because Gordon's just a wonderful servant leader, and I want to have a heart for others uh, like Jesus does, like Gordon did. And I'm so thankful that God put Gordon in my life. And uh, maybe you're thinking of somebody today just like a Gordon Walls in your life. And, man, I want to encourage you, just text them. I mean, calling would be great. I'm sure they'd love to hear your voice. Even writing a handwritten card or note would be awesome. But at least text them to say, hey, you know, I was thinking about you today. I just want to say thank you for giving to the Lord. I was a life that was changed. Maybe you remember that old song by Ray Bolts. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I was a life that was changed. And, and I was because of a guy like Gordon Walls. You know, also, though, I love in verse 5 of Hebrews chapter 13 about God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. You know, when I read that recently preparing for this, I felt like God just said, you know, let my kids know that I got you and I see them. Tell them that I've got them and I see them. Or, you know, just keeping it individualized, just God saying, hey, I got you today. I see you. And won't you say that loud with me? I got you. I see you. You know, that's one of the things I love about there's so much good music out there. And, you know, that song, Egypt, uh, he's a good, good father, the blessing. I mean, so many good, good songs out there. And, you know, I think about that song, the blessing, and it got that one part that says, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you talking about God. And friends, we need to be reminded of that today, that God is with us. He's every morning. I love in Lamentations. You hear me say it all the time, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, that God's mercies are new every morning, and great is his faithfulness. In other words, we get a fresh start every 24 hours. So be encouraged by that today and know that you can stand on that promise and there's such power in that, friends, when we do that. And so know that God, the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? But one of the things I, I know that's so important sometimes, friends, what if we sometimes just change our perspective on our circumstances, knowing that we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear of what can mere people do to me in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. What if we change our perspective to that? on our circumcised and just invited Jesus to be with us that Lord I know you're my helper I don't have to have fear because of other people because you are with me and you are for me the Bible tells us that and each day friends we have to make a choice to either be a victim or to say no I'm going to be a victor you're going to be a victim and have a pity party or say no I am a child of the most high God and I'm going to live in victory today because I choose to do that not because I feel like it, not because my circumstances make me want to feel like that or look like it. No, I choose to be a victim. I'm sorry, a victor. And I'm not going to be a victim anymore and choose to have victory. And it's amazing if you will speak that several times and your, your, your mind and heart, if you can, you can train them, then those feelings of inadequacy, woe is me, those pity parties, they'll go away. They'll evaporate. But you've got to stand on what God's Word says about you and not your feelings. And friends, I know I can say that because it's been a battle for me. And I've had to have men in my life and a mom that's encouraged me and other wonderful female faith-based leaders that have challenged me, encouraged me to not get in my feelings for too long. Because they can lie to us, friends. Amen? Of course, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. You know, this is what we have based uh, you know, this whole summer road trip series on. And uh, yet, really, normally I, I don't. I don't share the last part of 13, verse 8. And today I'm going to share that. The part you normally hear me say is Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just want to remind you, in case you missed some of these programs, that in other words, you know, Jesus was with you in the past. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Then it says today. So that means right now in this moment, friends, no matter what you're dealing with, that Jesus said, hey, I'm with you, I got you, I see you, I want to help you, you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And then it says, Jesus Christ, same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, he's going to be with you in the future. 
both now and always. And, you know, sometimes I can get overwhelmed by the future and how, God, how are you going to provide for this financial situation? And, God, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do there? And yet, friends, if you believe Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it just reminds us, hey, Jesus was the same with you in the past. He was there. He's with you today. I mean, think about it. You know, maybe things didn't play out the way you thought they would, but he was there. And most of the time they turned out better than I thought they could. It just wasn't in my timing and maybe not the way I would have done it because God wanted to just remind me who's in control. <laughs> right? Maybe you're like me, you like to kind of control things sometimes. And yet sometimes God has to humble us and get us out of that mindset. But there's three things, and I love this from Hebrews chapter 13, 8. The second part of that verse, first part's Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the second part, last part of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says, So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace. Say that again. So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace. And friends, what I think this is so important is that, you know what? Man, there's so many things, especially now with the internet and Google, all that, you know, that that the enemy tries to get us to say, man, put your faith in this. And if you'll do this, then you'll be happy. And then so many addictions with alcohol, drugs, pornography, you know, credit cards, buying stuff just to fill that God-sized shape hole in our hearts that only He can fill. I'm thankful for Amazon because it's bailed me out several times I've needed things. But friends, you got to be careful too, man. You can get into pushing that, you know, buy button and loading your cart up. And next thing you know, you spend 100 bucks. And friends, that stuff can add up quickly. And we can get in debt. And we know the Bible says the borrower is servant to the lender. So I want to encourage you today just to be satisfied with what you have. We talked about that in yesterday's program. And just realizing that there's a God-sized shape hole in all our hearts. Only he can fill and a bunch of stuff's not, not going to do that. Uh, a, a relationship, a marriage, I mean, it's just not going to do that. A, a certain job, yeah, those are all good things. And God uses them to help us, uh, you know, have completion here in our earthly journeys while we're here. But... It doesn't mean that we're going to have total happiness, and it's definitely not going to be easy at times. So I want to encourage you to stand on that, even though sometimes I know we're like, God, I don't know where you're at. Are you are you listening? Are my, are my prayers going up to, to the ceiling and not getting past there? But I love this old quote by Ralph Abernathy. He says, you know, I don't know what the future may hold, but I know who holds the future. And friends, that is Jesus. Oh, man, I used to love that hymn. I haven't heard it for quite a while, but uh, that old hymn, it says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because Jesus conquered death. We talked about this on Monday. We do not have to fear death anymore. Because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. No matter what it looks like, it could be overwhelming, but if we just say, hey, you know, I'm going to surrender this to you, Jesus, then it's all good. He can help out. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Friends, I want to encourage you today. I love it. It doesn't say I can do some things through Christ who gives me strength. It doesn't say most things, okay? I can do most things through Christ who gives me strength. It says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So, friends, I want to encourage you. Maybe that's a Bible verse you need to put up in your bathroom mirror, on your coffee pot, on the refrigerator, on the dashboard in your car, okay? And read that out loud when you're weak and weary. And I get it, friends. I've been there. But you know that you know that you can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives you strength and that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thanks for listening. You've been blessed by this program. hope you'll share it with somebody else. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.